Can we have a conversation about Angel's Envy? What the heck is going on at Angel's Envy? If you're here, my name is Jack Bigadou, also known as the Hood Sommelier. Make sure to click follow and share this with your friends so we can talk more about whiskey. So a lot of things have been happening with Angel's Envy, and I want us to kind of have a true conversation about it. All this craziness started, all these things started when they brought this guy in. His name, Owen Martin. Now, before we talk about what Owen Martin is doing at Angel's Envy, let's talk a little history. So back in 2006, a man of Lincoln Henderson retired from an old distillery and started his own brand. According to rumors and says, when he put his own whiskey in the barrels, first day he walked into the rick house, there was so much evaporation, evaporation also known as angel share, that he said, this whiskey is so good, even the angels are envious. Hence the name, Angel's Envy. Don't quote me on that. That's a story I heard. Anyway, 2006, he started putting whiskey in barrels. And 2011, officially, his whiskey come out. Angel's Envy is known as a new brand coming, coming on the market uh, with whiskey uh, finish in Spanish oak uh, barrels. Now, if he was kind of ahead of his time at that time because a lot of people weren't finishing whiskey then. But to finish whiskey in a barrel, that's kind of, that's kind of new. So Lincoln Henderson, um, may he rest in peace. Um, two years later in 2013, unfortunately, passed away. So he passed the business, Angel's Envy, to his son, Wes Henderson. Keep that in mind. Wes Henderson. Wes Henderson, obviously, keep the tradition, bring his kid in, and all the Henderson family work there. Fast forward a few years down the line, Brent is doing great. Everything is doing amazing. Uh, about six years down the line, um, here comes big corporation Bacardi. Bacardi goes, hey, uh, we like what you're doing here. We also have some Spanish oak. You buying some from us to do your business? Guess what? Uh, we want to buy you. Wes say, hey, who refused good money, right? So Bacardi now owns Angel's Envy. So they become a Bacardi brand. But I, I felt like since they became a Bacardi brand, nothing really was happening. It, it was stalled. Uh, I think the only thing that came out after that was like uh, the miser they finished a whiskey in Mizunara. But where, where I really respect uh, Angel Zevi is their annual cast strength that they release every year. Go look for it. Angel Zevi cast strength. Hopefully 2024 will have a review of it down the line. But like I said, something crazy is happening. You remember the name Wes Henderson, the owner and his kid at that time? Yeah. A couple years back, Wes goes, yeah, guys, I'm done. I don't want to work for a corporation anymore. I, I sold, the business was sold, Bacardi on it. Let me get my share, I'm out. So what happened is Wes get out. And this is all full Bacardi ran now. The one thing also they were missing is probably a solid or a visionary when it came to their product. Because like I said, the product is kind of stalling. It's Angel's Envy haven't brought anything new in uh, for years and al almost forgotten on the shelves. He's always the same rye and the same, you know, release. And it, well, it, be it became boring. Clue in. The name I told you to remember at the beginning, Owen Martin. Owen Martin, young kid from Colorado, working the brewing and actually work as a head distiller for Stranahan. If you don't know the brand Stranahan, look it up. You get to see Stranahan. And if you want to know more about Owen Martin, check the link here or up here somewhere uh, where uh, I, I did an interview of Owen Martin to tell us a little more about himself. So you can you can check it out here. But. Owen comes in and I met Owen 
and I'm biased because he is a, an evil genius. He he loves complexity. He loves boldness. He loves flavors. And since he started working there, we've seen so many new things happening at Angels Heavy and including the release we're going to talk about today. When I'm telling you the man is trying everything, he's trying everything and he's he's not holding back, right? So Owen comes in and the first thing that comes out immediately uh, is their new 2023, I believe. It's about a year, a year and a half in that he's been there now, or about a year now. Um, yeah, new 2023, flavor is bolder. Flavor is, I'm like, okay, what else is coming? You flip that immediately. He puts out uh, their castrant ever release, pure juice of Angel's Envy, castrant bottle and bun boom come out i'm like okay okay what else is there right what else is there he say wait hold my beer comes this expression here this expression is angel's envy triple cast never heard of it like i said bold so to know a little bit about the angel's envy triple cast we're going back to school and we're reading so this, a 46 years old, uh, in chart three, age whiskey, American oak. He took those barrels and what he did is actually, he divided them in three different type of barrel. First one, Hungarian oak. Second one, Chicopin oak. And third one, French oak. And he goes, okay, now that we have this three, now let me go to work. Let me cook, right? He takes this three out of each barrel and he blends them to create what we have in front of us here today. The Angel's Envy triple cask. There we go. Angel's Envy triple cask right in front of you right here. Beautiful bottle, triple cask right in front of you. So this here is a blend of whiskey finish and three. So really the traditional finishing at Angel's Envy staying, but now they're playing with more than one type of barrel. You know, um, there's a French saying, if you don't move, you're backing away, right? If you don't move, you're totally a backing away. Meaning if you're not trying to explore new things, you technically are just going backward. So I think the, Owen is refusing to be like everybody. He doesn't want to be so. He want to be different. And I applaud him for it. So enough about the whiskey. Let's taste it. Hey, it's cold outside. Do you know what you need? A sweater. Get yourself a hood sommelier sweater. This is on my shop link below. And if you use my code in the comment, you get to have a discount. Hood sommelier. This is how we support the channel. Go on my store, cup you a shirt. Pretty cool. Nice, nice. All right. Okay. I don't know what I expect from this whiskey. I'm not sure what we'll expect from this whiskey, but let's look at the color here. Ooh, ooh. Not too dark on the color, but still good enough on the color. Yeah, like, light, you know, like sunrise, light, yellow. Legs, not too bad. All right, you have some water here. All right, okay. Whiskey looks nice. Ooh, that's an interesting nose. Ooh, the nose is complex. Fruity. Um, first thing I'm thinking of is Christmas cake. Some cinnamon. Some chocolate. A little bit of those, uh, those lemon peel. Yeah, dark chocolate for sure coming through here. A little bit of cherry. A little bit of that spice coming through as well. Yeah, this nose is interesting. 
maybe some apple-ish. Yeah, it is, it is complex. But the nose is very attractive. It's, it's, it's a mix of, of sweet, a little sour-ish, and immediately savory at the same time. So, all right, let's see what's happening. Cheers. Now this whiskey is 46% ABV, which is a little low for me. 92 proof. But tasting it, I know why it's 92 proof. Now I know why. I was a little worried, honestly, about that chickapin oak because another distillery tried the chickapin oak and I felt like it was a little too oily as a wood. And I felt like it kind of affected the whiskey a little more. French oak I like, Hungarian oak is pretty bold, but bringing that ABV down opened up the whiskey. Mm -hmm. The nose become more floral. There's that perfect blend of floral, sweet, and savory. All right. Second sip. Wow. That chicken and oak, you can taste in the mid palate. Sweetness is there. But those oak notes is really what you're playing with in your mouth. Those tannins are there. They're like drawing on your tongue. Finish, easy work. Nothing to worry about the finish. Sweetness is about um, mid, mid sweetness, not very sweet. But if you're someone who actually love like complexity of oak, this may be it. This will be for you. That complexity in oak really is coming through here. Like I'm, I'm almost, this was a project for sure, because you can't, I mean, unique oak finish is, is true. It's, I see why they call it triple oak. Uh, let me know if you've tried this triple oak of Angel's Envy. For me, it's, it'll be a, it's not, it can be a daily drinker. It has to be something I, I crave, like miss a little bit of that oakiness and I'll go and I'll grab it. But it won't be a daily drinker for me. It won't be something I'll jump on directly, but I can appreciate how Owen is not stopping and is really pushing the boundaries of what whiskey should be. And I, I whomever blended this, if he blended this, this perfectly. Um, but those oak, if you're an oak person, if you love oak and how it plays in your on your palate, you definitely have to give this a try. So stop at a bar, stop at a place, give this a try. Till next time, make sure you click, subscribe, share, and give me your opinion what you think of Angel's Envy. Till then, cheers.